Olaf Hansen saw beauty in the world, but he could not hear it. Born into a prosperous family in Sweden, Olaf lost the hearing in his right ear as a young boy, following a severe case of frostbite. When his father died, Olaf immigrated to Minnesota with the rest of his family. One morning, Olaf woke up dizzy after sleeping near an open window in a cold draft. His family took him to a doctor, but by the time they made it to town, the dizziness had stopped and his hearing was gone. At the age of 16, Olaf entered the Minnesota State Academy for the Deaf in Faribault, where Fanny Wood, a young faculty member, took him under her wing, teaching him English. He later wrote, A new world opened to me. I was given books to study. I wore out two or three Swedish-English dictionaries. An exceptional student, he graduated in three years and then attended Gallaudet College, a school for the deaf in the nation's capital. It was there that Hansen set his heart on a career in architecture. But no deaf person had ever entered the field. Some counselors told him to try another career, like engineering. Architecture demanded training, skill, and a long apprenticeship, and was hard even for those with hearing. A successful professional had to sell his abilities to a client and tell them about every step of the process, from initial plans to finished building. After graduating, Hansen took several low-paying jobs with architectural firms to build his skills. He traveled to Europe, finding ideas and inspiration from the great buildings. But then a severe recession hit America in 1893, and people didn't have money to hire architects. Without good prospects, Hansen accepted an offer to come back to Fairbo and teach at the School for the Deaf. All the while, he sent off his elegant architectural plans to people, still chasing his dream. Finally, clients began accepting his plans, and contracts became so plentiful that he hired four assistants. During his seven years as an architect in Fairbo, Hansen designed 24 private residences, 18 stores and hotels, 10 school buildings, and two churches. Hansen knew the challenges that faced deaf people and stepped forward to help others. In the early 1900s, he learned about a rule saying that no deaf person could take the civil service examination for federal jobs. He knew from his own experience that talent and skill were more important than hearing and wrote a letter to President Theodore Roosevelt requesting an end to discrimination against the deaf. Roosevelt acted and changed the law. The call block was one of Hansen's earliest commercial buildings, erected for Everhard Call and G.W. Batchelor in 1896. Born in Germany, Call came to Fairbo in 1869 and ran a grocery store for several decades. He was, according to the local newspaper, one of the largest landowners in Rice County. Call also served as a city councilman for years, so he understood how important his new building would be to downtown Fairbo. Although the street level has been substantially altered, note the fine arched windows and the stepped cornice, a testament to the skill of the architect. Olaf Hansen's growing reputation took him away from Fairbo, moving first to Mankato, then to Seattle, Washington, where he lived the remainder of his life. His legacy lingers still in this town, found in the buildings that he designed. <laughs>